today. That uh, that report was uh, from Ntlantlach uh, Lsane. So let's talk to um, our uh, uh, expert who we have in studio. William Bird is the director at Media Monitoring Africa. Good to see you, William. Thanks so much for coming in. So, I mean, I, I, I see you laughing uncontrollably here. But, I mean, what did you make of the testimony yesterday? It was classic Cloudy Motsuneng, you know. He diverted from issues. He used... Uh, language and ideas that, that, that seem to come from a different and a parallel universe. Uh, you know, he had the, 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 the Justice Zonda was laughing, he had the advocate laughing. You know, so if it was meant as a light-hearted relief interlude to, to something, I guess we could have all, you know, forgiven him for that. But I, of course, the very serious issue is that for the last week, we've heard very, very serious allegations and a number of them being leveled against Cloudy Motsuneng, where he's either directly or uh, otherwise indirectly involved in a number of decisions, uh, ideas, uh, choices, irregularities, illegalities, all sorts of things. And his appearance yesterday was, you know, he just uh, basically dismissed all of these things. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing. If, if, it, if, it, if it's meant to be a light interlude and we're meant to sit together and all have a good laugh about it, that's one thing. But nobody is laughing when jobs have been lost, production companies are not being paid, the financial difficulties that the SABC finds itself in, and a lot of this has been attributed to the time where Cloudy was the COO uh, and in charge. And I think from what we gathered here, he was more than just the COO of the SABC. I mean, let's get to the, the, the part where he mentions there that he actually did get involved in the editorial side of things. Was that his job? He said it was. I mean, his, his idea of what was his job seems to be uh, literally something closer to a god at SABC, quite literally, and that he was involved in every decision. If you heard at one point in his testimony, he said, if you look at the board decisions, I was involved, or I drove at least 70% of those decisions. And then he was making decisions on a, on a lower level, you know, in, in, in newsroom decisions, which is clearly and fundamentally not his job. And yet he still then had to have a very cushy relationship with the minister because, in fact, the, one of the SABC boards, and I say one of them because it's very easy to get lost in this, one of the SABC boards actually removed him, the then minister said, no, 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 we can't remove him because Baba loves him and he's coming back and he was re-employed and at that point he then had basically unfettered access and unfettered power. And we know that he would actually routinely employ people irregularly, send them down to uh, shows and he'd have them sitting in the control room listening and watching and if something was going on that he didn't like, he would say, no, cut that, take it off. And he would shout at people. So there was, he was responsible for a culture of fear and for trying to return the SABC to something closer to, to what it was under apartheid than to anything resembling any, any democratic era. Yeah. Editorially, a COO, mm. especially when it comes to news, let's get the facts straight. Is that permissible? Does no. the COO of a news organization as big as the SABC, as not only a, a news organization, because we do uh, so much more, but in the news department, does the COO, is it his job to interfere? No, and what he did, and he knew that eventually when it was repeatedly pointed out to him, is, is what he then did was he changed, he changed the policies unilaterally to make himself editor-in-chief, effectively. But until that point, and in fact now, SABC's editorial policies have this thing called upward referral, which says that if, for example, you're doing a program and you have an editorial decision and you're not sure about which way to go, you escalate it to the next person. If they're not sure, they escalate. If they're not sure, they escalate until it gets to Patiswa. And then she would say, okay, this is the issue. If she still isn't sure, then ultimately at, at the way it stands, it would then go to the CEO, not to the COO. Yeah. Now, what he was doing was he was taking this upward referral thing and just saying, I'm uh, Mr. Motsuneng and I'm going to tell you what to do from all the way from the top down. So he completely disregarded any level of editorial independence. I mean, the man really is a, 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 a vision of a fascist in the making who lives on a parallel universe. He's, yeah. he's closer to, to you know, a fantasy novel than he is to reality. So we also heard him talking um, with, with regard to qualifications, saying that um, at the SABC he was headhunted for the position and they knew very well that he did not have a matric certificate, but um, uh, he, he mentions the individual who told him the story yeah. that uh, it doesn't matter, you're talented. I mean, talent will get you by. Is that fair? I mean, people go and study for years and years and years to, to, to be able to sit in a position that, you know, they, they're qualified to do. But 
Cloudy comes in, doesn't have a matric, and, and gets by on, on talent, according to him. Again, your views. So, you know, this, this, this education thing is a, it's a red herring, really. And, and in fact, Justice Zondo had this discussion with uh, Mr. Motsuneng and in, in, during his testimony. He said, you don't need to convince me that someone needs a formal education or even needs to have passed matric in order to, to do well in life or, or display talents in areas. The simple truth around that issue, and it's covered in the public protector's report, is that Cloudy Motsuneng misrepresented the fact, i.e. that he lied and said he had a matric on the form when he didn't have a matric, and he knew that he didn't have a matric, and he says that the SABC knew, which makes it even worse. So it's not about whether people are coming down on him because he doesn't have a matric, that's nonsense. It's about the fact that he lied and said he did have one, and he admitted that he made the figures up of, of his five subjects that he allegedly passed, and his, story, and his testimony was quite bizarre. He said, I didn't fill in the one because I knew I'd failed it. He also said that um, he, he, was, uh, he, he lectured at Witts Business School and that his, some of his material is being taught. It, and we do know that, that we, we had a, the tweet on earlier this morning, mm. Witts Business School quickly, promptly coming out with a statement. I mean, that was faster than, I've, I've, I don't think I've seen a, a tweet and a response coming out that fast from Witts Business School saying, absolutely not, we don't have any of that. And we invited him, it doesn't mean he's an academic. Uh, again, making these... Making these under oath almost, you know, that, that's, that's the reality. Oath. He is under oath and he's making these, um, these statements. So it, it's, it's, hard, it's, it's hard to listen to, isn't it, in a I way? I mean, anyone that's, you know, the, the reality is, is it is so out, at odds with, rea with, with what we know actually happened that you almost want to laugh at him. But, of course, you go back just three years ago and this was an institution where certainly I wouldn't have been on, allowed on as a guest People in the, in the newsroom weren't, weren't allowed to speak. People had to talk to you outside of this in a car park if they wanted to say something even vaguely controversial. No one was, felt any level of freedom to do what they needed to do. If you read the Public Protector's report, it talks of, there's a litany of corporate governance failures there. So it's not just the, the lying about the matric, it's lying about the editorial, it's doing irregularly, appointing his friends. You know, overseeing all sorts of issues that he shouldn't have been have had a hand in. It's it's any number of things that he failed fundamentally. The yeah. SABC. Well, we're going to be hearing more from him today. So, uh, as we do know, that's 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 something uh, to to look forward to, no doubt. If, if if that's what you're busy watching at the moment, I want to move on to the other issue that came out of the SABC yesterday, mm. and we were watching the president addressing. Uh, South Africa, and unfortunately, a clip was played where mm. the president stopped, he had made a mistake, and he picks it up again. Now, this was shown on the SABC, and it came out yesterday in a statement that this was sabotage, mm. and three permanent staff and one freelancer have been suspended due to what is being called sabotage of the president's address on the recent violence in the country. What do you make of this? So look, on the surface, it sounds as though it's something that you think, wow, that's a bit of a strong reaction to this because they've immediately suspended three people. But when you look at it and you say that, that, that the charge is sabotage, I mean, firstly, this is the public broadcaster. So if they've got evidence and it suggests from the statement that they do have clear evidence that says there was a coordinated effort to, you know, embarrass the SABC or sabotage the SABC and or the president... That is a very serious thing to, to occur. If it had just been someone who, you know, got the control sheet wrong and they played from the wrong time in or they misplaced and, and put the wrong, uh, you know, played from the wrong section, that's a completely different matter. But what they're saying is that this was a deliberate effort to uh, undermine the SABC and undermine the president. And that they do have to take seriously. So the fact, I guess, that we know about it, that we've heard about where the investigation is, is a good thing. And we have to hope that they continue to take us into their confidence as to, you know, what, what emerges from this point yeah. on. Because, I mean, the word sabotage, it, it indicates yeah. a very, very serious issue. Uh, and, and as you say, it seems as though there is evidence. And this would need to be backed up and supported by evidence yeah. if, in fact, sabotage is, is the case. Unfortunately, we do see a lot of incidences here at the SABC, and, 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 and I will say it, where, you know, there's a lot of, unfortunately, sloppy things that do happen, that things mm. are not checked and things are played, and people, you know, just assume that everything is going to be fine, but they are not when you play them. 
But that's one issue. Sabotage is a completely different issue that will have major repercussions for yeah. those that have been uh, pointed out here. I mean, have we seen something like this happen before where the SABC has actually come out and said, no, it was sabotaged by our staff? No, and, and I mean, ironically, we've just been talking about Ladi Motsune. If you wanted to talk about sabotage there, he was an example of that on an institutional and systemic basis. This is, this is quite different. You know, it's often live TVs, incredibly difficult. People are bound to make honest mistakes as they do in the nature of things. So you will see someone maybe have the wrong title or their name will be misspelled or the presenter will be looking over there and, and T or C will be live on air. We've all seen those things, right? Those are normal honest mistakes. But when you say you deliberately wanted to embarrass the SABC and the president in putting forward what you knew was the wrong, what you knew was the wrong, um, uh, playing from the wrong part of that recording, that's a very serious issue. Yeah. Uh, one, one final issue as we, as we wrap up our conversation, we're also seeing Barry Bateman trending at the moment. And this is all on the back of, of um, him calling Julius Malema after he had done, I suppose, uh, Julius Malema was speaking to the media. Mm. Barry Bateman not too happy with what he was saying and just went on and called him the P word. And this was mm. caught on camera. He has... On, well, I don't know if he has ha issued an apology, but Eyewitness News certainly has. Yep. What, 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 what do we do in a situation like this? You've got a journalist who's caught on camera saying something about a political leader, and you know, then obviously the, the media organization apologizes. We haven't heard from Barry. We've seen suspensions happening here, and some saying such a light sentence for that. Well, what are your views? Well, look, I mean, and that does it. You know, there he was clearly not intending to be on air, and, and someone seems to have recorded or they hadn't switched off their camera yet after they'd just wrapped up the interview with Mr. Malema, and he's clearly frustrated with what he had said. And he didn't assume that that would have been shown, obviously, right? So a similar thing. But I, and I don't think that the person who screened that did it deliberately. I mean, it was part of, you know, this is the nature Life of Live coverage, it's the way it Life is, yeah. Live coverage. And of course, you know, these are, you know, Barry Bateman's going to be regretting that quite significantly. Mm. And I don't think that EWN's got any choice but to, you know, make sure that they go through a disciplinary hearing and that they uh, go and, and look at the evidence and, and see what he actually said and, and take that into context. They've, they've apologized, which is good, but I did see something that um, Mr. Malema hasn't accepted that apology. So I think that the, 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 one of the more unfortunate elements here is, is that it's going to continue to heighten tensions between the EFF and the media because those things are already at an all-time high. The head of uh, EWN, Maslati Maslasi, is also the, uh, the chair of South African National Editors Forum, and there's already been that court case. So I think that this is going to just feed into some people's perspective of the media. Yeah, it certainly is. And I mean, the friction between political parties and the media is at a very, very fragile stage right now. And so <laughs> getting... Uh, no, more tension in that. And, and you look at these exposés that are taking place and the threats to journalists, because that's, that's the reality at the end of the day, William, and you watch this very yeah. closely. Um, the thing is, is that journalists can't be prevent, prevented from doing their work. They need to do investigative pieces. Yeah. I mean, we saw uh, a big one coming from Polly von Weyck yesterday, or, yeah. or the day before, I'm not too yes. sure. I'm, my, my days are getting muddled up here. But, you know, the repercussions from what she's written there have been massive and again attacks on her yeah and this is a routine thing now we see it uh, particularly with journalists that expose wrongdoing and especially female journalists they get attacked for uh, for any stories that they write these days on social media they just have to tweet they could be tweeting oh what a glorious day it is in south africa and people will they're trolls that'll just go after them and say the most extraordinarily unkind and brutal and offensive and hateful things to to those journalists. So there's there's a clear, and I mean, look, we're not unusual in this in that this is a global trend, mm -hmm. but that we need to take action on this. You know, it's, we can't have a situation where journalists fear for their lives and that they can't actually have a voice on social media because every time they say something, they get they get trashed. Yeah. You know, it's not acceptable. We've seen a lot of journalists disappearing from social media because yeah. they just they just. They're not interested. They'd rather just do their pieces and, and stay away from, from exactly. actually tweeting on the day. William, thanks for chatting Thank to you. us. All right, so talking to us about a range of issues with regard to the media, but starting off by talking about what we're going to continue seeing today. That's former SABC Chief Operating Officer Claudia Motswanen taking to the stand at the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture. It was uh, sitting, or it is sitting in Parktown, Johannesburg. He did this yesterday, and once again, we'll see him there today. All right, let's take a break. We'll see you after this.